All right, good morning, everyone. It's Thursday morning. Thursday mornings here are breeding mornings, so I'm going to go breed some cows this morning. This video is by request from one of our loyal viewers, Michael. And uh, so we're going to talk about this morning about AI, why we AI, and the process of AI, and how we go about doing it, and selecting the bulls. So first, let's talk about why we AI. There's a bunch of reasons. First and foremost for us is the genetics. We want to select the best bulls to use on our cows to increase our herd efficiency, our production, our longevity, all those things. So by AI, I can buy several bulls uh, to fit what we need in our herd. So how I go about picking bulls is I sit down with the rep from our AI company and we talk about those things, which qualities we want to work on in our herd. And then what he does is he takes our cows he will build what we call a mating guide. So in the, this blue binder we have here in the very back, there is our mating guide for Rich Lane Farms. And this will list all the cows in our herd and the bulls we've chosen. And it will give you our first choice, second choice, and third choice. So we're breeding this morning. We're gonna breed cow 623 here this morning. We'll go in here, we'll find cow, oops, it's already on the right page. We'll find cow 623, and the top choice for her is a bull called Fuel. So in my binder, I have all these cards, and these are all the different bulls we use. So here's the bull Fuel. I just marked down here that 623 got bred this morning. Later on, I will enter all this info into our computer, and then our computer software will track that the cow was bred today, and it will alert me in 18 days from now that she could potentially come into heat again don't see a heat then it will prompt me at 28 days that she is now ready to be confirmed for pregnancy and between 28 and 36 days is when our veterinarian will check them with ultrasound to see if they're pregnant. So the genetic components of why we that's why we AI cows to improve our herd. Secondly dairy bulls are a little bit known synonymous for being mean hard to handle. We're in the barn every day twice a day bringing the cows up for milking we have employees that bring the cows in. Our children are around here. The last thing I want is for a bull to get a little ornery and go after somebody. So for safety, we don't want a bull in the barn. Um, and part of that too is our cows are all grouped together. So it's the cow calves. So the day she starts producing milk, she goes into the milking group and she could potentially show a really good heat at around 20 days after she's had her calf. We do not want her to become pregnant shows a good heat and the bull is with her, the bull would breed her, but we don't want that. We want to breed our cows at 70 days in milk. 70 days after she calves, that's when she, we will breed her for the very first time. That allows her to recoup from having a calf, that allows her milk production to peak, and we get the best production out of the cow that way, and the best repro performance from letting her have that 70 day rest period after she's calved. So those are a couple of reasons why we AI. The main ones are the genetic component and the safety for the bulls, not having the bulls. So I'm gonna go ahead here and load up a gun this morning and we'll go to the barn and breed 623. So first, this is our AI gun. The straw of semen will go in here. I've had this tucked in the back of my shirt here for a few minutes, just warming it up. In the tank here, all the semen is stored in liquid nitrogen extremely cold so what we're going to do is we're going to take a straw of semen out of the tank pop it into this seed flock which is full of warm water we're going to thaw the semen out so you know canister five semen handling is very important the straw of semen the warm water it goes for 35 seconds While that's warming up, I'll get a few things ready. I have sleeves, a sheath protector, I've got a reading glove, paper towels in my pocket. Now you guys have the luxury of watching the bottom to see if I'm actually doing 35 seconds. Usually I'll be counting out loud right now, but I feel funny counting out loud.
detector. So now the gun's loaded, ready to breathe. I'll put it back in my shirt there. And all I'm doing now is now that the semen is being thawed, I want to keep it warm, body temperature. So that's why we put it in there. For winter, what we'll use is this gun warmer. This is a battery pack, warming pad inside. This keeps the, the guns warm. I use this in winter when the barn is very cold. The summertime, I just pop it. I'm ready for my coveralls. Let's head to the barn. Okay, here's 6 cow 23. Gun. Now I'm just going to gently move our cervix so we can get the gun through the three rings of our cervix. Slowly deposit the semen. there. That's one cow bred. So I'll keep an eye on her and maybe in 21 days she'll show another heat. Hopefully not. And if not, then in 28 days she'll come up on my list and we'll get her preg checked. Okay, so the cows we bred this morning, I'll come onto my herd management software and we're going to enter them in as bred. 623, bred today. We used a bull called Fuel. There's fuel. Enter, enter. It asks the technician, so me. And what do we breed her on? So today these cows were bred on what we call a double off sync program. That's a sync program. That's a series of shots over 27 days, I believe. Uh, someone will correct me, but it's a series of shots over a number of days that will bring her into heat. It's timed AI, so those shots happen. And it, Thursday morning at 7, we breed cows. That helps for efficiency a little bit so then yeah when we're selecting bulls we look at this giant paper here called a proof sheet on this proof sheet it lists all the different bulls a whole bunch of different info it'll go over production numbers uh, how many pounds of milk fat protein they'll be giving confirmation mammary system feet and legs all the different parts of the cow uh, so that's what we'll use to select the different bulls we want and what we do here is we use what's called a proven bull. So bulls that have daughters out there that are collecting info based on those daughters. We are a proven sire herd. Uh, there are genomic bulls. I am not a big fan of genomics for multiple reasons. I am not going to get into that here. But uh, to each their own. We use proven sires. And uh, like I said, we sit down with our AI company and we select which bulls we want to use to best fit our herd uh, for multiple reasons. Another thing we do in our herd is we use a little bit of sex semen, semen that has been sorted to have a heifer calf. So in particular, some of our top end cows that we really want a heifer from to add to the herd, we will use sex semen and 99% chance that if she conceives, it'll be a heifer calf. Uh, the rest of the semen is just conventional semen and that's where it could be a bull calf, it could be a heifer calf, you don't know. What we also do as well with the dairy herd is we use some beef semen. So cows that we do not want to keep offspring from, we will use beef semen. Uh, and also any cows that have become a problem breeder that are being bred you know, three, four, five times, uh, we use beef semen. That way those calves, that beef semen has just a little bit more potency. The conception is a little bit higher for us, so we'll use a black Angus bull for that. And then those calves, bull calf, heifer calf, they are not going to enter the dairy production side. The nice thing for us is we have a beef herd. So those calves will enter the beef production side of our farm. So that's this little overview of picking bulls and a bit more info for you. Okay, so we'll show some footage now of us prepping our beef replacement heifers to be bred. So we'll be putting the cedars in and I'll explain that. Um, but unfortunately, the day I went to breed them, I was going to film that and add that to this video. That morning ended up being one of those mornings that got crazy busy and 
I remember to film it when I was done. So unfortunately, I don't have any video of that. Okay, not only are we seeding today, we're also seedering. Running through our adjacent heifers today. They are getting a seeder. What a seeder is an incline full of progesterone. It's gonna help bring them into heat as part of a sink program we use in our heifers. So I'll implant the cedar. They're also going to get a shot of Fertiline. And uh, yeah, get these seven heifers done and get them back on speed. So for anybody who's worked cattle right off pasture off of nice lush green grass, it's pretty squirty out the back end. But anyways, every year we do AI in the beef herd. Uh, we've done cows lots in the past and we've done heifers every year for the last seven or eight years. And uh, this year we decided to take a year off of the cows. We bought some new bulls. We kind of diverted that, in, that expense going towards the new bulls and no AI on the cows. But we're going to do our heifers and the reason why we do it is just for that genetic improvement. Uh, we can select a sire that will help build our herd and we have for the last few years always kept replacement heifers off of heifers because I think that's our fastest progression in genetics and uh, the bulls we're using today are bulls that we can never afford to buy as walking bulls on the farm and it just allows me if I want to use you know a certain bull on this one particular heifer I can do that and I can mix and match to try and get the best uh, females possible for our farm so this year on these heifers we've bought sex semen it is uh, time consuming some people don't like doing AI because it's time consuming this is a three-step process we brought them in today they got their cedar and their shot they'll come back in a week from today and the cedar will be removed they'll get a shot of estromate that will bring them into heat and then uh, next week Thursday they'll run back through we'll give them another shot of fertiline and we'll be actually AIing them so it's a three-step process uh, with cows it's always trickier because they have a calf at foot so you have to sort the calves off it makes for a longer day we calve in April and May, so that means we're breeding in early July, and we've typically it's really hot. A downfall to an AI program is once that cedar's in or the, the shots are in, the clock starts ticking. It's called timed AI for a reason. And we've done this in sweltering hot weather, uh, done it in the midst of a thunderstorm. It's once the clock strikes, that's when they gotta get bred for the best conception. You gotta go. So we've dealt with kind of everything. Uh, as far as weather wise, we've bred a in the evening where you can hardly stand still because the mosquitoes are biting you so bad but uh, there's more benefits than there are uh, negatives so that's why we keep doing it. Not only for the beef herd, also for the dairy heifers. comes this little blue cord on that's how it helps us remove but that's too long another heifer will play with that and chew on it pull it it'll come out so we always cut them off so I always kind of tuck their tail down take about an inch or two past their tail snip that cord off there okay she's done
Yeah, we've done the cedar program on the dairy heifers the entire time, and we've had really good success with that. Um, there's a five-day program and a seven-day. A lot of guys use five-day, especially on heifers. We've always done seven-day and just and had good luck. So right now we're running 73% conception on our cedar sink on the heifers. So it works yeah, very, very well. With the beef cows, we've had as good as 80%. We've had as poor as 40%. It's kind of a mixed bag on the beef herd. But what we've learned over the years with the beef herd especially is the handling of the cows is so important. Um, you know, if something goes wrong and the cows get a little bit worked up, that eats into your percentages really, really fast. Because um, you can spend all the, the money on the proper drugs and be strict about your timing. But if the cattle are worked up and stressed out, that's just going to work against you the whole time. So yeah, try our best to take it easy with them. And uh, yeah, so far we seem to like the cedar sinks really well. This is a glance at why we do AI. Uh, the dairy herd is 100% AI. And what we do with the beef herd is we, re we use AI on our replacement heifers. Some years we'll AI cows. This year we've chosen not to. We purchased two new bulls. So the bulls are out with the cows right now and the bulls will be with the cows for about 45 days this year, that's what we're going to do. Normally we do 60 days, but this year we're going to try and shorten it to 45, just to keep our calving interval a little tighter there. So what we do there, the bulls are out, they're just doing their thing. I check on them every day, every other day, to make sure the bulls are in good order and that they're sound to breed the cows. But on that end now, the bulls do their thing there. And because we're not handling the beef cows every day, the safety factor isn't as much. It's still a thing. But uh, you have to respect bulls. A bull is a mighty powerful animal. So we try to select bulls that are calm, a good disposition, because we just do not want to deal with that. Uh, an incident like that with a bull could happen in 10 seconds and it could affect you the rest of your life. So we have a lot of respect for bulls around here. But the two Hereford bulls we have this year have amazing disposition. They're very calm, very quiet, very easy to work with, uh, which we really like. So I'll end it for this video, folks. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.